Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy! Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everyone, it's Caleb here on I-65 South heading back to Montgomery from Clinton, which uh, as you can probably guess means I got Whataburger, so I'm pretty excited about that. But I was in traffic earlier and there was a guy that just out of the goodness of my heart saw that I was running out of lane and needed to get over and just let me in. And I gave him my courtesy thank you thumbs up, but I don't like to do the thank you wave. I think that it could be misinterpreted as like saying, hey, back off or something like that. And so I like to give the thumbs up, but it really made me aware of the fact that we don't have a great gratitude sign. We need a road gratitude sign so everybody knows that that means thank you. But anyway, it did make me aware of the fact that I think as a society, we're just not as grateful as we need to be. And I think that is a real problem. Because gratitude is something that is just so important for every individual to learn. And it's something that people will recognize in others and admire. I think regardless of what side of the political spectrum that you are on, it's very easy to fall prey to ingratitude. It's very easy to forget to be thankful for the things that you've been given. For example, on the political right, I'll start with us. We love individualism. We love this kind of rugged, do-it-yourself kind of mentality, and I do too. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually a good thing. But sometimes we can get so swept up in it that we start thinking that we got there on our own. I mean, I believe that people can be good and, and build things that are exceptional and help out people, but I think we do also have to remember and acknowledge that no matter how talented an individual is, no matter how hard they work, there's always somebody that was helping them out. Whether it's your parents and the way you were raised, whether it was your family and supporting you when you needed them, whether it was people at your work that helped you out with that, no man is an island. We all work together to be able to achieve things. And so sometimes that sort of rugged individualism mindset can get in our way. Then on the contrast, when it comes to the political left, they kind of have the opposite mentality and that's the reason that they can also have a problem with being grateful. So a lot of people on the left have an entitlement mindset. that They think that they are owed certain things, whether it was because of past grievances or because that's just something that they inherently believe they have a right to, like healthcare. Regardless of what it is, they just kind of believe that they're supposed to get things and other people are just supposed to do things for them. And so that's also a toxic mindset that could lead somebody to be ungrateful for the things that they've been given because you're not grateful for things that you think you're supposed to just get. And so really both sides can fall prey to this trap of not being grateful. And when I think about gratitude, the very first Bible story that I usually think about is the story of Jesus and the 10 lepers. Now I want you to think about leprosy and remember it in its cultural context. At the time, not only was it a horrible and painful disease that you pretty much had for the rest of your life in most cases. But there was also a social aspect to it. You had to be an outcast from society. So not only did you have the physical pain, the scarring that happened to your skin, all of those things, but you also had a great emotional burden too. You were cast out from society. You couldn't be around your friends or your family for fear of infecting them. You had to live on the outskirts of town. And then on top of that, you also had the spiritual exile. There were people in the day that believed that if you had leprosy, it was because God was punishing you for something. And so they assumed that if you had leprosy, it was some kind of divine punishment for some great evil that you did. And that would cause people to judge you on the spiritual level as well. And so there were so many facets of leprosy that were just horrible. And yet here are 10 men that have leprosy that come to this man, Jesus Christ, and in an instant, all that goes away. He heals them. They're just whole now. Which, by the way, is exactly the way and it is an apt metaphor for how Jesus deals with our sin. That we're dealing with a disease that we have absolutely no hope of surviving. We have no ability to cure ourselves or to fix the problem ourselves. And along comes Jesus Christ and says, I'll heal you. I'll fix it. I will repair this thing that you cannot handle on your own. And even after this, nine lepers just didn't come back. There's only one leper in the group that decided that Jesus was worth thanking, worth coming back for and saying, thank you for doing this for me. I think if we follow that man's example, 
that's going to go a long way in fixing some of the problems in our country. I don't think that it's a fix-all cure. I don't think it's a silver bullet that are going to solve all of the political and socioeconomical problems that we have in the country. I don't believe that at all. But don't you think of both sides that all people in America learn to be a little bit more grateful for the things that we've had and acknowledge that other people in our lives and ultimately God had a big part to play in anything that we have? Don't you think that would go an awful long way in improving the spiritual health of our country? I certainly think so. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.